Good morning, grade 5. Welcome back to grade 5 mathematics class. How are you all doing today? So let's start a new chapter today, chapter 13, mapping skills. I'm sure all of you have used or seen a map like this. So what do you mean by a map? We can say a map is a visual representation of an entire area or part of an area typically represented on a flat surface like paper. So what do we use a map for? We may use a map for finding the location of a place, where a place is located or to find the geography of a place or what a place will look like and it will also help us to find out the accessibility to a place, how we can reach to a particular place that's called the accessibility. So these are certain ways in which we can use a map. Today we'll learn about a few things which will help us to read or use a map. The first thing is scales. So scales help you to draw the picture of anything by shrinking its size without affecting its shape. So a map scale refers to the relationship between the distance on a map and the corresponding distance on the ground. Here the drawing is the map and the actual object is the actual distance on the ground. So a map scale is the relationship between the distance on a map and its corresponding distance, the corresponding actual distance on the ground. See in page number 190 of your textbook, you can see this picture. So a boy is standing on the ground. He is looking at an airplane which is flying through the sky. Will he be seeing the actual size of the airplane? No. What he sees will be a tiny image of the airplane because the airplane is at a very large distance. So you can say what the boy sees is a scaled down image of the actual airplane. We all know the real size of the airplane is very huge but when he is observing this airplane from a large distance away from it, what he will be seeing is a small, a scaled down image of the actual size. Now in the next page, page number 191, you can see this picture. This is the drawing of a bus. And the length of this drawing is 6 cm. Would it be the actual length of the bus? It may not. The actual length of the bus would be 6 meter instead of 6 cm. So you can say 1 cm on the drawing will be equal to 1 meter in real. So you can say this drawing here is a scaled down image of the real bus. And the scale here used is 1 cm is equal to 1 meter. It means that 1 cm of this drawing represents 1 meter of the real object. So 6 cm here in the drawing means the bus is 6 meter long. There is one more example given in your textbook. You can see this picture of a train in the same page. Here the length of this drawing, the length of the train in the picture or the drawing is given as 10 cm. Would it be the actual length of the train? No. Here the train shown in this picture has a total length of 120 meter. But here it is shown in the drawing as 10 cm. So you can say from this drawing 10 cm is equal to 120 meter, the actual length of the train. So 10 cm is equal to 120 meter. So 1 cm would be 12 meter. So you can say the scale used for this drawing is 1 cm is equal to 12 meter, which means 1 cm in this drawing represents 12 meter of the actual object. So I hope you are clear with these examples of how to use a scale. Now on a map, we use scales all the time to represent the geographical distances on a flat surface like paper. For example, while preparing a map, we may use a scale such as 1 cm is equal to 100 km, which means 1 cm on the map will represent 100 kilometers of geographical distance. So I hope you are clear with the concept of scales. Now we'll talk about magnification. So what do you mean by magnification? So magnification means 
enlarging the apparent size of something and not the actual physical size. Apparent size means what the size appears to be, what you see in front of your eye. And the apparent size of an object differs with respect to its distance from the position you are viewing it. For example, you are looking at a tree standing very close to it. The tree will appear big in size. Then you move away from it. Then you are viewing it from a far away distance. Now the tree will look smaller than before. So you can say the apparent size of the tree has changed but the actual size of the tree or the physical size of the tree remains the same. So magnification is the process of enlarging the apparent size not physical size of something. So here in your textbook you can see in page number 191 you can see three, these three images. This is the picture of a dia. In the first picture the picture is drawn in a square grid which has squares of side half a centimeter. In the second picture, the dia is drawn in a square grid which has got sides of 1 cm each. In the third picture, the picture is drawn in a square grid which has squares of sides 2 cm each. You see, as the size of the squares in the grid increases, the picture is getting enlarged or magnified. So, when the size of the squares in the grid increases, you can also say the area it covers, the area the drawing covers will also increase. Now let's talk about root maps. So what do you mean by root maps? A root map is a map which shows the roads and transport links particular to an area. Or you can say a root map is a map that shows the main roads in a particular area or the main routes used by buses, trains and other forms of transport in a particular area. Now in page number 192 of your textbook, you can see a route map like this. And this is a route map to Summer's house. And it uses the scale 1 cm is equal to 500 meter. What does it mean? 1 cm in this picture will represent 500 meter in real. So in this map, Summer's house is here. Here is Summer's house. And his house is 3 cm away from the signal. So this is the signal. So this distance is equal to 3 cm. And from the signal to his school, it is a distance of 2 centimeters on this road map. So can you say what is the total distance from Summer's house to his school? It will be this 3 plus this 2. And what is it? 3 plus 2 equal to 5 centimeter. So the distance from Summer's house to his school is equal to 5 centimeter on this road map. So how would you find out the actual distance using the scale given here? So in the scale given here, it says 1 centimeter is equal to 500 meter. So what would be 5 centimeter? 5 centimeter would be equal to 5 into 500 meter of actual distance. And what is 5 into 500 meter? It is equal to 2500 meter which is equal to 2.5 kilometers. So the actual distance from Summer's house to his school is equal to 2.5 kilometers or 2.5 kilometers. So using a route map, you can find distances between two places like this. So Summer's house is in Ria residency. This is his house. So if the distance between his house and this library is a total distance of 6 cm on this route map, can you say what is the actual distance between his house and the library? So we know 1 cm is equal to 500 meter. So the actual distance between Summer's house and the library would be equal to 6 into 500 meter which is equal to 3000 meter. And what is 3000 meter? It is equal to 3 kilometers. So the actual distance between Summer's house and library is equal to 3 kilometers. Now the distance from this market to the signal. 
is a distance of 6.5 cm in the route map. And we already know the distance from the signal to Summer's house is equal to 3 cm. Now can you find out what is the total distance from the market to Summer's house? See, from here to here it is 6.5 cm, from here to here 3 cm. So what is the total distance? It is equal to 9.5 cm that is 6.5 plus 3 that is equal to 9.5 cm. Now can you say what is the actual distance between the market and Summer's house? It will be equal to 9.5 cm into 500 meter. So let's do the calculation. 9.5 cm into 500 meter. What is it? It is equal to 4750 meter or that is equal to 4.75 kilometers. So the actual distance between market and summer's house is equal to 4.75 kilometers. So I hope these examples are clear to you. Now let's talk about keys. What do you mean by map keys? A map key or legend is a list of symbols that you use on a map. And here you can see a few commonly used map symbols. See, this is a key or this is the symbol used for representing a bridge. And here you can see the symbol used for representing a railway line. Here this one is for footpath. And there are various symbols used for representing various features on a map. So in page number 193, you can see this picture. This is a map of India and there is a key shown here. And there are different symbols here and the description for each symbol is also given along. So the first one is the symbol used for representing places famous for sculpture. The second one is used to represent a temple. The third one is to represent a rock cut temple. The fourth one monasteries and so on. You may go through these keys now. Now there are a few questions given along with this picture in the textbook. Let me read out the first one. Which is the only place marked in the map that is famous for painting, monastery and a rock cut temple. You can use this map key or legend to identify the place from the map. So let's have a look. So the question is to find out the only place which is famous for painting, monastery and rock cut temple. So first let's have a look at the key. For rock cut temple which is the symbol used, a filled in square is used and then Monastery, this is a symbol for a monastery. Now painting, the last one is the symbol used for representing places famous for painting. So can you identify which is the only place famous for these three? That is this one, Ajanda. So with this key we identified a place from the map. So the second one, where can you find monasteries? See, which is the symbol used for monastery? This one. So can you identify which is the place that has got monasteries? See, observe the map carefully and you'll find that the place famous for monasteries is Ajanda. The third one, where do you find an iron pillar in India? So look at the symbol used for iron pillar. You can see the second last one in the key is the symbol used for iron pillar and find out which is the place which has got an iron pillar. So have you found out which is that place? You will find that the place is Meroli in Delhi. So there are three more questions given along with this picture. You may go through the questions yourself. Now you have to go through all these topics that we learned today from pages 190 to 193 of your textbook. Then in page number 193 you can see one more question related to keys. You may go through this map carefully and answer the questions given along using the key given here. So children, I hope all the concepts we learned today are clear to you. That's all for today. We'll see you in the next class with a new topic. Till then, bye.